How's it going guys? And welcome to another YouTube video. Okay, now I originally was going to do this YouTube video as just a raw leg day, okay, but it didn't pan out that way. Because obviously I'm new to YouTube, so I didn't know if uh, this video would get copyrighted if I did a raw leg day because of how loud the music was in the gym. So instead of doing a raw leg day, I'm just going to do a walkthrough, talk through about everything that we did throughout the leg day, okay? And obviously just to it'll probably give you a little bit more of insight of how I structure my leg days, okay? And how I go about training certain body parts, especially during this growing part of the year. Now, this brings us to our first exercise, okay? Well, our first two exercises. Sometimes I superset them, sometimes I don't, okay? We got the abductor and the adductor, all right? Now, the reason why these exercises are at the start of the leg day is because I like to get the whole hip area into in, in a part of the thigh warmed up, okay? I like to get my glutes firing, okay? And just get everything moving correctly, all right? Now, when, when I squat, okay, I squat with a little bit of a... I call it a bit like a hybrid stance, okay? Because I have the bar on a high placement on my back, okay? So it's a high bar squat, but my stance with my legs is a little bit wider where I recruit more of my glutes and my hamstrings, okay? And less of my quad. So it's a bit like a hybrid, okay? Because nine times out of 10, if you have that bar, high bar, your legs are a little bit more narrower, okay? And you bring more, more of your quads in. Um, and then if you squat with a wider stance, it's more of a low bar squat. But because I squat with a wider stance, I like to obviously warm up my glutes before I even get in there, okay? My glutes are, I need them primed, okay? I have had a problem with my lower part of my back before, which all stemmed it. Once I've been to physio, it all stemmed. It wasn't to do my back, it was to do my glutes. My glutes wasn't firing correctly during like squats and that sort of stuff, so... I was putting a bit too much pressure on the lower part of my back. So my go-to exercises when I walk in the gym for leg day are the abductor and the adductor. I do two sets per one, okay, per exercise, okay. But before I do the two working sets, I've already done like probably around about 55 reps because I do 25 rep sets, okay. I do 25 rep sets, increase the weight, okay. Go again for about 20, okay. Increase weight, go again for 10. And then by then, my, my glutes, okay, are already warm. My adductors are already warm, all right. Everything is nice and toasty before I even get to the first two working sets. So, once I get to the first two working sets, okay, the first set is a straight eight to 10, nothing crazy, okay. Nice, nice heavy weight that obviously challenges me for eight to 10. And then the second set is the exact same weight, okay, pushing for that eight to 10 again, but then it's also a drop set, all right. A lot of my workouts are drop sets or cluster sets or some form of super set, tri set, giant set, okay? A lot of volume, all right? So, two sets, eight to 10, second set, eight to 10 plus drop on both machines, okay? The abductor and the abductor, all right? Now that that part is nice and warm, nice and toasty, okay? We move on to our third exercise, all right? Which is a lying hamstring curl. Now, I hate this machine, okay, especially the one that's in the gym, all right, because I feel like that, basically, the way the pads are set, the pads are set at quite a bit of a point, to be fair, and some line hamstring curl machines, obviously, the majority of them are already, already at a point anyway, but they're not that prominent, okay, it's just a little raise, okay, a little raise, but this one seems quite, quite high for some reason, um, and my hips raise too much off the pad, no matter what weight I'm doing, I could be doing a ten. I could be doing ten kilos, and my hips are probably still raised. Um, so I have to proper think about having to drive my hips into the pad in order to properly work the hamstring. But again, this is basically put into place because I do a hip hinge movement on a Monday. I do my deadlifts, okay, and that obviously works your hamstrings, your glutes, okay, your erectors, and that sort of stuff. So. On a leg day, I just try to do an isolating exercise just primarily for the hamstrings. And the only one that they've got in this place, okay, I much prefer a seated hamstring curl, but the only one that they've got in this place that I work out of is a line hamstring curl. 
so obviously that's a, the third exercise in. Now, on this one, okay, exact same rule applies for this as it did with the abductor adductor. I warm up, okay, and by the time I've got to my first working set, I'm probably about 55 reps deep, okay, and then we go into my first working set. First working set on this, okay, is 8 to 12, all right, that's a moderately heavy weight. I keep progressing. When, when I say my first set on everything is like 8 to 12 and that sort of stuff, okay, I'm still trying to force progressive overload, okay. If I can increase the weight on last week, I do, okay. If I can't increase the weight, I try to better the reps, all right. So I always try to push that progressive overload, even if I am staying like in the 8 to 10, 8 to 12 rep range. So the first set, 8 to 12, nice and easy, okay. Obviously, nice heavy weight, push myself. But then the second set, okay, is a drop set, all right. Maybe it could be a double drop, a tri triple drop, okay. It's as many as I plan in on that given day. Um, I think in the video it's a triple drop, I think. Um, but again, it's controlling the negative on the rep, okay. Explosive on the contraction part, okay, controlling the negative. All right, I'm trying to keep my hips pushed into that pad as much as physically possible. Now, because it's the only, line, the only hamstring exercise I've got in here that purely isolates it, like I said, I'd much rather have a seated one, okay? It's the only hamstring exercise I do on leg day. Because at the moment, I'm trying my best to build up my quads, all right? I want that big hanging quad that over, like overhangs above your knee, okay? That's what I want. So that's exercise number three, okay? So we've got an abductor, adductor, adductor line, hamstring curl, Spot on happy days. All right. So then we move on to the main exercise of the day, which is barbell squats. Now, a lot of people, for some reason, don't like barbell squatting. Okay, that's up to them. Everyone's got their own opinion. Some people much prefer hack squat um, or leg press. Again, that's their own opinion. All right. Some people don't think squatting helps build your legs. Okay. Trust me, if you're underneath that bar for like 50 reps plus, you're building your legs, okay? So try not to get into, get sucked into the barbell squatting's pointless. You should hack squat or leg press, okay? Because barbell squatting is not pointless, all right? So that brings, up, brings us on to squatting, okay? I walk in, I set up, get my squat shoes out. Obviously put my squat shoes on, that's all, all, all that good stuff, okay? I'm still breaking in my new squat shoes, okay? So after a little bit, they do hurt my feet, but still breaking them in. We start off with the bar, okay, 20 kilo bar, nice and easy, 5 to 10 reps, nothing crazy, all right, but then as you can see from the video, okay, literally, the bar goes back, weight goes on, I walk back around, straight back in, no rest, okay, from the bar until about 140, okay, I think 140 is when I start wrapping my knees, okay, from the bar to 140, it literally is a case of, I do, my three reps, five reps, 10 reps, whatever, I'll do my three reps, okay? I think it's three reps after the bar, okay? As soon as the first 20 goes on, it's three reps, okay? I'll do my three reps, bar goes back, plate goes on. Three reps, plate goes on. Three reps, plate goes on. And I keep it moving that quick. I do the exact same with deadlifts as well, all right? Because it's a warm-up, okay? I don't feel like you need rest, if you understand where I'm coming from, okay? Because they're not challenging. All right, if I was to do like the bar for 10, a 20 plate for 10, two, uh, sorry, an A plate for 10, a plate and a half for 10, two plates for 10, okay, then I'd probably need a rest because I'll probably be getting gassed, all right? But all I'm using these warm-up sets for is literally just to warm up and prime the legs, okay? So when it comes down to it, I'll keep the reps low or I'll keep the tempo fast, all right? So load it, go again. All the way up until 140. Once 140 goes on the bar, that's when I start to take a bit of bit of time, okay? And that's when I wrap my legs. Yes, I use wraps over sleeves, all right? I've always used wraps for years, okay? The, the wraps that I've had, I've had them for about four or five years. Now, I prefer wraps, okay? Just because, obviously, it's, it's just a comfort reason, okay? And on 140, I don't, I don't wrap my knees that tight, okay? Like, my back offsets without wraps are like 120, 130, so I could do 140 without wraps, okay? However, 
when it comes down to wrapping my legs, I like to wrap them on 140 because then it gets my knees used to being wrapped before going to my working sets, okay? There's nothing worse than waiting until, you work to, until your very first working heavy set, wrapping your legs, going down and thinking, freaking hell, like, this is hurting my legs. Like, you need to mentally prepare yourself to, get, for, for, um, to have your legs wrapped because when you wrap them properly, Jesus Christ, it hurts, all right? So, light wrap for 140, get underneath the bar, bang, done, dusted, put it back. 160 is currently my working weight, okay? Now, when it comes down to squatting, okay, the goal is 200 for reps by the end of the year. Or 220, I want five plates for a single. But, I'm not doing it in some form of strength way that other people have planned, okay? Or some other strength program, okay? I literally put a weight on the bar, Okay, each week I come in and add a rep. So last week it was two reps at 160. This week it, one, um, it was three reps at 160. All right, next week it'll be four. Following week it'll be five. 180 for five, okay, the weight goes up to 170 or 180, whichever one I choose. All right. So obviously 150 for five, it goes up, okay. And the reason being is each week I see progression. Each week I'm getting stronger, okay. But not only am I progressing in my main lift okay my 160 okay i also drop down okay on my back offsets to say at the moment i'm doing i've just done on this on this squat session i did 120 yeah 120 for 10 okay and that was an extra two reps on last week so then it'll be 130 okay and i will build that okay but my back offsets are always unwrapped okay i don't wrap up on my back offsets all right so that way then i'm getting stronger with the assistance of wraps on my, on my main lifts my big lifts but then i'm also getting stronger with my unassisted lifts okay my back offsets all right so i'm not relying on wraps for the whole entire squat session so that's that after squats okay i move on to leg press now once I've done all my back offsets, because I literally go from 160 all the way down to back down to a 60, okay? Like, physically, I am absolutely battered. Like, my energy levels are done, okay? But that being said, obviously, the leg day still continues, so you got to find it from somewhere. So when we move on to leg day, but like, freaking out, leg day. When we move on to leg press, okay, I'll get my words out. When we move on to leg press, Nine times out, nine times out of ten, I tend to go in for a some for some form of intensifier, okay. Whether that be an ascending pyramid straight into a drop set, okay. Whether that be like on this video, I do like a cluster set, which is six by six. I do on this video, okay. Whether it be like a rest pause, it doesn't matter what it is, okay. Nine times out of ten, I opt for an intensifier on this leg on the um, the leg press, okay. Just so I can get as much bang for my buck, okay, with out having to spend so long there because of how tired it, okay. So on this one, I do a six by six, okay. Six reps, wait 10 seconds, I'll recover for 10 seconds, six reps, recover for 10 seconds, and keep it moving. I think for the first three or four rounds of six, I do average 10 seconds rest in between each one. But then on the fifth and the sixth one, I do have to take a little bit longer because my quads were just on fire. They were burning. Um, I think I had 200 on there or 250. I'm not too sure. Okay, I'll talk for the video. Um, that's what I mean. Like I'm, doing the, I'm doing this recording now, like, freaking four days after recording and editing the video for YouTube. So I managed to try and remember exactly what I was doing. Because um, I haven't watched it back. So, yeah. So, the last couple of rounds took a little bit longer rest period, okay? But that's, but that, that's fine, that's not a problem, okay? Like, but I didn't sit there for like two, three minutes and then go back in, it was a case. So I counted to 10 seconds and then I added like an extra five seconds on just to try and let my legs recover a little bit more. The reason for this intensifier is because you wanna get as much bang for your buck in such a short space of time, okay? Nine times out of 10, with a cluster set, you choose a weight that you could probably get 10 reps out of maybe 10 to 12 okay but you break it up into six sets of six that way then 
you're lifting a heavy load, but for more reps than you would do normally. Okay, so it's kind of like it's kind of like a strength exercise, but put into a hypertrophy endurance kind of way. All right, so it's a lot more challenging. Okay, if my math is correct, six, six, 36, 36 reps. Okay, on a weight that you would normally get ten to twelve. And then you'd have to recover and go try and go again and try and match 10 to 12. Okay, so it's a good way of getting as much volume in as possible, but it freaking hurts. Once that was done, um, I wanted to go straight over to the leg press and the leg extension and that sort of stuff. Okay, um, I know, yes, I'm just I'm going from a leg press to another leg press. Okay, but I like the machine leg press to do narrow stance, low foot position, and blast out to quads and get a lot of volume in. Um, but that was taken at the time. So I went on to walking lunges, I think it is. Um, with walking lunges, it was literally a case of sandbag on my back, one lap there, one lap back, drop the sandbag, body weight there, body weight back. Literally for two to three sets. Um, and I, I normally finish off with this, with this, so my legs are literally completely done and I normally finish off with it. Um, but I have to add it in, obviously, because you have to work with Work with the gym, okay? I'm not going to be that dickhead who walks over to somebody and tells, tries to make him hurry up and get off just because I want it. That ain't going to happen, okay? So you work with the gym. Once I'd done the lunges, okay? Lunges are self-explanatory, okay? Literally, one foot in front of the other, down, back, nothing crazy. Drop set. Like I said, I like my intensifiers. I like to do a lot of volume. So literally, down and back, done. We went on to the, like I said, the plate load, the... Uh, the machine leg press, okay? Now the machine leg press, I supersetted it with a heels elevated squat as well, okay? So I did heavy weight on the machine press, okay, the machine leg press. Like I just said, I do a narrow stance with a low foot placement so that I hit 99.9% .9 of my quads and I don't incorporate my hamstrings or my glutes. Like I said, I want a lot of quad development this year, all right? So low foot placement to bring in the quads. But then I also supersetted him with a heels elevated squat, which is predominantly quads as well. So the machine press was as heavy as I could possibly go for 12 to 15. And then the heels elevated bodyweight squats, okay, was just a burnout. Just keep going, keep going until my legs are done. This was originally meant to be a tricep. It was meant to be plate loaded leg press, leg extension, and then heels elevated squats. But it turns out someone was on the leg extension for a very long time. Um, so that didn't happen. So it just ended up being the leg press and the body weight squats. But obviously it is what it is, okay? The gyms are busier now, it's January, so it's perfectly fine. All right, everyone's getting fitter and healthier. Happy days, that's what we like to see. So that was my leg day, okay? And apart from the leg extension not being in this video, that's all that was missing. And that's my leg day every week. I don't change, I don't change it. Sometimes I might add in an exercise if I feel like hitting my hamstrings a little bit more. Um, but like I said, my hamstrings get hit on a Monday as well. But that's it really. And before anyone jumps on the bandwagon and says, why well, don't train calves? I do train calves, but I do them on rest days. Um, on rest days, I do abs and calves, uh, abs, calves, cardio. So I'll do five sets and then on um, my two rest days, so 10 sets a week, it's perfectly fine. But yeah, that's his, leg, that's his leg day done, okay? Like I said, it was meant to be a raw leg day, but it didn't turn out that way because of how loud the music was in the gym. So I'm going to have to look into see whether I would get I would get done for copyright with that because I don't like a wood. Um, but my next video is a chest video push, push workout, which is going to be good. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it, guys. I hope you learned something. If you want to do the leg day, do it. If you don't want to do it like that, don't. If you want to try your own, try your own. Okay, if you want to take some tips and tricks on this, crack on. All right. But yeah, like nice and simple, nice and easy, like that. See you later, guys.